And good morning. We're back. It's day five. And good morning, John. How are you? Well, how are you? I don't know yet, Jed. I don't know. Cause this bloody early. This is early starts for a man of my age, you know. Well, yeah, <laughs> I'm all right. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I'm, you? I'm, you loving, okay? I'm loving the outfit. Uh, the Kex. It looks like <laughs> a laser disco. Well, what's going on? Hey, I've got a cap to match this, mate. This is. Uh, no, I just, uh, I, I love, uh, I brought up in an era, you know, when the old tweeds and everything were in, I think it's, uh, I think we can have a dress, uh, dress for a bit of fun on the golf course, I think. At least, it, the, at least these can take uh, take my mind off my swing a little bit, can't they? So, uh, not, wor- not worried about the result if you're wearing something like these. Sartorial, it reminds me of being back in the Palace Lido Laser Disco back oh. in the <laughs> 80s and 90s, isn't it? The world's biggest <laughs> laser that. disco. Well, uh, we're back. Maybe. We're back again. Uh, just, just give us a pricey of what we're doing today. What's the lesson today? What have the viewers got? Well, to we're, learn? I think I think we we're down to look at approach shots, Jed. So um, uh, perhaps a different view on approach shots and how important they are, and what we can do to uh, you know to get ourselves in a better frame of mind on approach shots. Uh, but. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at approach shots. Good stuff. How, how, how to manage them. It, it's, it's like the, the business part of the uh, the golf round, isn't it, really, in some ways. But I've got an announcement. Yesterday, uh-huh. we had a competition. And Bruce Thorne was the grand winner of these. Pitch mark repairers. We, we had the, the backroom team put them together in his favourite Arsenal colours. So well done, Bruce, for his effort yesterday but we, we're going to go beyond this is a big thing for Rowney tv because Rowney isn't known for being generous believe it or not but this 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 is it's going to blow your mind folks we, we've got a question and it's going to be which hole on the course at Rowney which hole is known as the ridge now, what we're going to do is you're going to put the answer in the comments box. And if some of you have got it right, we'll do a little draw because up for grabs is. Look at that. Look <laughs> at that. Can you believe it? So, please, which hole is the ridge? I'll put the question up on the screen as well. So, lots to play for today, lots of excitement. The course is going well. Thanks for the feedback, by the way. Um, had some great responses. And don't forget, if we've got any questions, please, you know, fire them in the box for John at the end of the lesson. Here endeth the lesson, but here begins the lesson. Right, John, the floor is yours. Oh, yeah. The screen really? is yours. Let's go. All uh, right, OK. Well, for, just want to make a point, Jed, uh, at the start of this by uh, just explaining what we've done this week. Uh, almost by accident, if you like. I hadn't really. I just put this thing together, as you know, very, very quickly. Um, we've done very, very little technical stuff this week. Uh, you know, people. I've had people say I'm not a technical coach, and that. Well, in fact, they do a lot of technical work. It's how you deliver that that um, that information about the technique. But we really don't want to be on the golf course thinking about technique or where our hands are and whatever. So everything we've done this week has been almost of a non-technical nature, and it's all and a lot of it has been external focus. Now we start off the week by looking at the stability and the hold, etc. Of course, just to give us a foundation. Um, and again, I'll stress that whatever suits you, or whatever works for you, that's your that's your swing, it's your hold, it's your stance. I'm not being prescriptive in what I've suggested. The next thing we did though was the awareness of club face. And then we went into uh, putting and chipping. So what we've done is we've worked from the hole back. And when I say that, so what we're doing today is we're looking at we're looking at the approach shots to, to, to greens. And what we're saying here is that everything that from the approach shot to the chip to the putt is what we call the scoring zone, or what I call the scoring zone. And people have a misconception on what happens on these approach shots. When we talk about approach shots now, I'm talking from 130 yards in um, to maybe 80 yards, 70 yards, that sort of area. And our misperception is this, that when you look at the TV coverage of, of golf swing, of golf shots, of golf tournaments, and you see these players and they're from 100, 120 yards out, these pros, 
The perception is, and when I ask people, they answer it this sort of way, that the pros are getting birdies from that distance around about 60, 70, 80 percent of the time. Where in fact the stats show that even the world's very best players make birdie from 80 to 130 yards 9 percent of the time. So 90 percent of the time they do not make birdie. And the average distance, the, the best season average on the PGA Tour from that distance the best average from hole to putt, the, the, best, the average, best average distance for the season was Tiger Woods, and it was 12 foot 6. And you, don't make a lot, you don't make a huge number of putts from 12 foot 6. So we think that we've got, we are expected to get this ball within a, a, a certain area and, and be looking to make birdie. And I'm saying that the first thing we need to do when we get into that range is to change our perception, because what the pros don't do is they don't make bogey, and they don't make double bogey, and they don't make triple. So the key issue here is, what have I got to do not to, avoid, not to get a, a bogey or a double bogey from this fantastic position I find myself in? And I've been there, we've all been there, haven't we? We hit this great shot, we stand there, we look at it, and we screw it up. So what is it we can do that we can maximise the opportunity that we have and minimize the risk. That's really what the approach play is about. So the first thing I would say about approach play is this. Again, we go back to these lofts on the club and being and going for the wedge shot from 110 yards, 115 yards, etc. etc. Most people don't know how far they hit the golf shot. They don't know how far they hit the wedge, they don't know how far they hit the nine iron, etc. So they take a club out, which is going to give them more loft. And when they put more loft on, on the club, they put more spin on the ball. When they put more spin on, spin on the ball, if the wind is blowing a bit, as it does on, uh, over here, what will happen is it will adversely affect the golf shot. So the first thing to do is to look at the shot and say, what is it I've got to do here? Where is it I've got to leave this ball that's going to give me the best opportunity if I don't make my target? So there's a bit more strategy on the approach shot. The first thing I will say is take a good look at the pin and just remind yourself that the pin is never your target. The pin is never the target. You've got to pick up a spot where the ball is going to land. Now look, again, because of swing speeds, because uh, of our playing ability, we aren't going to get this ball generally. I mean, the elite players like yourself or whatever, Jed, you, you might well get a lot more spin. Yeah, you might get a lot more spin, Jed. But for most players, the ball isn't going to stop. So you pick a you pick a different target. Don't don't consider the um, the pin as your target. Look at where you want to land the ball, where it's going to maximise the roll on the green to go into the pin or to be in the safe side. You look at the hole, you look at your target, and you say, look, if I miss my target, I want to be on the left or the right or the short or long. And then you pick a club that you want to get, that you believe is going to deliver the ball to that target. And most of the time, that club is more club than you're going to select. The number of times that people come up short on approach shots is absolutely scary. Now, part of the reason is they, is they put too much spin on the ball and they don't carry it far enough. So I would the first thing I will say is, when you look at how to approach this, is pick a spot which is going to leave you, it's going to be away from any trouble, it's going to leave you, if you shouldn't get to where you want to be, in the best position that, to minimize the, the damage that you're going to cause. And we don't pay enough attention to where we want to land the ball, and we don't pick our target properly. Now, the next thing I'll say, and it's a little bit technical, is if you take if you take a wedge, for example, and we'll look at this old hickory as a wedge, then we're looking at the wedge position as being sort of in the middle of the stance here. That's really where you want to be on your wedge. So if you're taking more club, just move the ball a little bit forward. Don't have the club in the the ball in the wrong position. Let's Let's not have the ball too far forward or too far back. Let's get a sensible position where we can still strike the ball, strike the ground in front of the ball. 
nothing changes on where the where the club is going to hit the ground. You're going to hit the ground in front of the ball, even on these approach shots. And all too often, because we're not confident with where we're going to put the ball, we haven't got the club, we start to swing without being in the shot enough. We tend to come out of the shot because we're, we're concerned about the ball not going to the right place. So we get more comfortable with a shot that you can play more consistently, take more club, have less spin, and leave the ball in an area or, or a zone in it where you are more relaxed about getting the ball to the to the hole on the next shot. So short being short sighted is a very 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 dangerous or penal place to be. And um, you know we look at rounded golf course and say that you know it's, it's it's a bit of a part of the holes you can hit it almost anywhere. Well you know there's more strategy than you think at rounding. Now when we talk about your approach shots as well. What I would recommend people do the next time they go out is when they at every hole they play, go to a position at the hole. At the hole, if you can, now if you can't see all the way down the fairway on the hole, go to another point. I'm thinking about the fifth, for example. You have to stand on the ridge before the before the hole on that bank. Have a look from the hole back. Have a look from the hole back. And ask yourself, where is it I want the ball to be for my approach shot to this green? Take a look at the green and say, where's the position I want this ball? Where do I want this ball to be where it's going to be coming into the hole? For example, uh, the seventh that is an obvious example. You don't want to be down on the right. The ball is going to kick. You don't want to be approaching the, the uh, playing your approach to the green on the right-hand side over the bunker. You want to be up on the left. So stand on there and have a look at the hole from the hole back and ask yourself, where's the best place for me to be playing my approach shot? And have a look at the distance that that is as well, because you, your distance perception is completely different when you look back down the fairway than when you look to the hole and the target. And that will form a strategy for you. And if you look at that, you say, well, what club do I need from there? How many times are we are we sure because we've underclubbed? How many times are we sure because we put too much spin on the wind's got it? How many times have we gone so far to the right because we're left to right shot? That's another thing, by the way. We really, really, really want to make more allowance for the wind when we put the spin on the ball. If you've got a five yards, ten yards, left to right shot, let's say, and you want to have, you want to have the ball to end up in the middle of the green, and middle of the green is never a bad place then you can't have your target as the middle of the green. You've got to make an allowance for that spin and that wind and come in and let it roll out. Now, you might think that's a bit of chance, but it's, it's not chances, it's minimizing, it's minimizing the disaster which is going to happen if you just knock it for the middle, the wind takes it, the spin goes, it bounces right, and off it goes into the bracket, then you're left to chip it over the bunker. So there's, there's a much more of a strategy involved in approach shots to the green, and you can start with that strategy by like, taking a look from the hole back and seeing where you want the ball to be and seeing the shot that comes in from that perspective. It's take, it changes everything. So you know, so that's that's my that's my take on approach shots. One, take spin off because we can't. We, we're not going to grip the, the the ball on the green as most club golfers. We're not going to spin it back five yards, uh, whatever, like they do on the pro tours, like like Paul does, like you do. You know, we, we haven't got the club head speed to do that. So get more club in your hand, get less spin from the club, don't worry about the height issue, and pick a, pick a target which gets you to the middle of the green and allows for your shape of shot and the wind, etc. Does that does that make sense to you, Jen? This is pure gold. And if we could just uh, backtrack a bit then, because it's something that we've discussed, and it's this issue with spin. Okay, and right. I've only become enlightened to this and watch this, folks. This is a key to a lot of success and it is understanding the spin that you put on the ball. And really, it's almost like the more spin that you've got on the ball, the more risk uh, appears. Uh, am, I right? am I right there? Well, yeah, well, look, when you, a golf club is designed, the angle of a golf club is designed to come impact into the ball and to create spin, the ball only goes up in the air because of the spin that's put on the ball. So if we take a face like that, it's going to have less spin than a face like that. 
And, it, you know, I think our conversation started, Jed, didn't we, when we talked about the approach shots. It was on the t- TV the other day. The approach shot to the fifth green. You know, where should, where should you leave your ball? And the issue is this, that the club golfer that cuts it left to right and then he kicks it to the further to the right and he's got that big part of the hill to go over onto the green and a steeper slope. So more, cap, more, more height required over that bench and whatever. What he's going to do, because he's going to get more height, he's going to have to put more spin on the ball because the ball will climb quicker because of the spin. When he puts more height on it, he hasn't got the club head speed to get the distance. So he sacrificed distance for spin, uh, distance for height. That's what happens. So get, get yourself in a position on your approach shot where you don't have to create so much spin. Now, there are times where you want it. Of course there are. But if you are, if you are a, 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 an honest assessment of your ability to get distance and height and know how far you hit it, then you can create a strategy from 100 yards, 120 and 80 yards in. Because it is more strategy. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. How about this then? How about right. this? And I'm going to have to generalize here a little bit. So yeah, yeah. if you've got a, an approach shot to a green and yeah. one option is a hard wedge. Okay, so that is one option, a hard wedge. But if you swap that for a three-quarter nine iron or three-quarter eight iron, I think you're going to have less spin being impacted on that ball, aren't you? I, 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 well, of course, Absolutely. I mean, spin is created by the angle of the club and obviously the speed that you can get into the shot and it creates that spin and up it mm-hmm. goes, of course. You know, and, and that's where this club head speed is, is massively important. But you make a, you make a, uh, ask a very valid question there and it's something that um, I did think I needed to mention this morning. I forgot about it in my first, pre- my first bit of ramble. Sorry about that. But when you get to where the target becomes much more associated with you on this approach shot and you're thinking, you look at it, here's my chance, which is almost a, a recipe for disaster. What I want people to start to think to do is to take more club, to put a, a full swing on it, because half swings and three quarter swings yeah. are difficult, put a, full, yeah. put a full swing on it, but an 80% swing. Really, we should be going in there, instead of trying to thump the hell out of the wedge, we should be taking an 8 or a 9 iron, and we should be taking a, a, we should be swinging at 80%. The pros on tour are only swinging at 80%. Mm. So find a flow and find a rhythm and a turn and a, and a balance, all the things we talked about, and swing at 80% with more club and you'll get better results. Um, and, and, and I think... The other thing that allows you to do, and this is um, probably something we'll talk a bit more about next week, but you see what, and I I will do it now, and I'll I'll repeat it next week because I think it is important. What we've got to do is we've got to start to recognize and measure how we are in the shot. In other words, am I in this shot, am I there all the way through with this 80% swing? Does it allow me to be in there? to be aware of my club face, to be square to tie. Am I in there and following through and holding it and finishing it? Am I measuring myself by this measure? Am I in the shot from start to finish? Or am I measuring the shot whether it's good or bad? That doesn't take us anywhere. Mm -hmm. What we've got to do is when we get absorbed in this, we've got to start to be in ourselves, in our shot for a lot longer and recognize where we lose it because what happens is we take this wedge shot out, we pick the pin as our target, we get there and we lose ourselves about here and we start to think about getting the ball there. It's not about that. It's about being in this moment here, having the confidence in in our ability that we've got the club that's going to deliver it without any effort to the target instead of having to try and get it up in the air and start whacking it. There is a, there is, you've got to understand your level of competence and your skill sets. And most people underestimate, or overestimate, sorry, how far they hit the ball. There was a, um, a big study many, many years ago, I think by Cambridge University, something like this, 
and they they questioned how far in reality people hit golf ball. Now I know, and I think if Jed, if I, if I asked you, you probably actually hit further, but if I was to ask Jed, uh, most of the golfers at uh, Randy Golf Course, the men in particular, how far they hit the seven iron, what would I, what answer would I get? Oh, I I would say it's going to be. 110 maybe average, really average i'd say well right well that, what the answer i would get yeah, is 150. That, that's the most yeah. clubs would say most clubs would say look seven iron that's 150 yeah. yards it's a standard thing yeah and yet yet the study showed that the average distance was 123 yards mm. 123 yards this is this is absolutely pure gold. What 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 John has just said there, I, I think is is so valuable about being in that shot and and not categorising it as good and bad. You know, being in that oh. in that shot is everything. I'll just I'll just tell you a little story. And my uh, partner in crime, Toby, he, he won't mind me sharing this, but for a few years now, the fifth, the third shot on the fifth has been. Is, oh, yeah. is nemesis and it, it's all fallen into place where you could see the trepidation um, the fear uh, creeping in it, he's had a good start he's playing well and uh, we, we've had this conversation because of course I see, I see Toby uh, now and again uh, he um, he actually he actually cleans my windows and, and we'll have a little uh, discussion and, and I'll say, crikey, crikey, Toby, how do you get them so crystal clear at such excellent value for money? And then and then we'll talk about the fifth hole. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that, John. And, and I can see it now in that the harder he tries to hit that ball, I can see the spin as it sort of flies into the gorse to the right. Yeah. And it's almost yeah. like he's tried so hard to do it, yeah. it's made it worse. So really, just going down a club and playing eighty percent, playing within yourself—that's the way to kind of just send that ball forward, isn't it? Well, well it is. But you know, if we take the fifth in, in particular, if you if you were to stand on the precipice on, on that hilltop there, and you have the green behind you, and you look down the fairway. The first thing I suggest you would do is say, where do I really want to be playing my approach shot from? Where's the best place? Now, look, you're not going to have the skill set to, to be in the right place all of the time. So you do have a plan B, and you have to accept there are some certain shots that you're going to have to play, maybe, which are more challenging you don't want to play, but you still have to be in it, and 80% swing and all of that. But if you stand there and you look at that hole from that point, it doesn't look anywhere near as daunting if you're out. If you, if I'm standing with my back to the hole, if I'm out on the right by the 18th tee, it's nowhere near as daunting, is it? No, no. And um, just for the viewers, the fifth hole has got a ridge. It has got a ridge. <laughs> but is that the name it's of got... the hole on the card? <laughs> Keep putting your answers down. We've got a lot of uh, submissions already. It's for this. It's for this. A great prize. So which yeah. hole is called the Ridge at Rowdy? Please put your yeah. answer in the box. So, so, we, so Jeff, we just, we, what, what I'm saying is on these approach shots, first is we have no idea how far we're hitting the ball. Second point is that we are taking two, uh, our wedges and whatever too often and never going to get there, having to go after the ball and try and hit it as hard as we can. We pick the wrong target far too often. The target is not the hole. That's where you want to end up, but you're not going to end up there if you have that as your target to pitch the ball on. It's not mm. there. And we don't pay enough attention on the approach shots as to if I miss my target, which is the safer side to be on. You know, don't be, don't go pin hunting so much. Take more club, take the spin off it, swing at 80%, and then you'll find that you don't, you see, part of the, the Part of the thing that helps our score, and a score is only one measure, isn't it? But it is the measure, I guess. Part of the things that we need to do, or one of the things we really need to do to improve our score is to stop the disasters. And generally, we can get into a good position to make a par or whatever, and we end up with a six and a seven. 
because we've picked the wrong spot, because we've got out of the shot, because we're anxious about getting the ball there, because we deep down know we've got a wedge when we should have a 9-iron. I would say to most club golfers, if you're 100 yards out, don't look at anything other than a 9-iron. I'll tell you what, we've got a, a point just come in from 20 times winner, former Ireland champion and general superstar, Paul Lowey. And he said, in fact, I'll put it up on the screen. Uh, so let's see. So here's Paul. When I play with my dad, it frustrates the life out of me. So this is Wilf. <laughs> Respect Wilf. Because he's short on every hole because he thinks he hits it further yep. than he does. I always yep. tell him, whatever club you think it is, take two clubs more. It's the same yep. with most mid-handicappers I play with. And it costs them a lot of shots. So is there a, a, a lesson here, maybe during lockdown period, where we just say, look, just just give it a try. Just take a bigger club. Whatever you're doing, oh, well, just do it. Just uh, just give it absolutely. a go. Because there's no well, question. The ball travels straighter, doesn't it? When when you undercook it, I think that's fair enough. Rather than try and flush it, undercook it, yeah, yeah. the ball kind yeah, of yeah. the trajectory just bonks it down there. Doesn't it? It's like you know. Yesterday, when you were doing the chip shots with the, was it like a seven wood or something or a five wood? I didn't use a wood, but I've got one here. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, uh, there's a wood. Look, I'm going to fix it. But they, yeah, we didn't do it yesterday. I didn't have one here. But look, there's a just a uh, what's this? Uh, some sort of hybrid. Yeah. Just, look, I'm just I'm going to hit this one, Jed. Just listen to the. Uh, hopefully, I can hit it right because I hadn't. Tra I wasn't going to do it. Just listen to the sound this makes. Just a little open stance here. There's the wood. Little swing. Did you hear that? Yeah, dink. Did you see it fly? I mean, that's that's all it needs. How easy is that? 30, 40, 30, 40 yards. What, what's what's the point in trying to dig out a sixty degree or fifty eight degree sand wedge when you can just well, do that? If you've just got to bunk it, say you know, onto the seventeenth, onto the eighteenth, even on on the fifteenth, you know, there's there's so many holes where you can make less complicated uh, at round. Look, the, the reason you carry the loft is to get over trouble. That's it. Right? Mm. You, if you've got loft, you've got height. If you've got height, you lose distance. That's it, because you put the spin on. And the more you try and thump it, the more you get into it, the less chance you have of getting distance. Indeed. Because you put more spin on it. And if you've got a look, you must allow for your shot as well. So you're standing there on the, on the uh, let's think of a hole. Seventh. You're standing there on the seventh. You've got your, now for a lot of club players, the seventh is played as a par five, isn't it? You know, for a lot yes. of players, and it's not, yeah. not a criticism, it's not an indictment on ability. You know, if you, can, if you can't get up there in two shots regularly, then it's a par five. And that's actually another issue in terms of your approach play. And that is set your set your um, greens in regulation, set your pars per hole, not on the distance of the hole which the car says, but on your ability to get to the green in the number of shots regularly that you are comfortable with. So the seventh would be three shots to the green for a lot of men. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing. The one thing for sure is if you play it that way, you'll have far less sevens, far less sevens than you will if you play as a par four. Well, so you stand there yeah. on the seventh hole and you've hit the first drive and you've hit it down the middle and it's kicked to the right. And you're looking at this hole here and you see the front and it, as it's to the right, the, the edge, it narrows. You've got so much more, so much more distance left of the hole and yet we go for the middle of the green. Now you've got a left to right shot. Mm. If you go for the middle of the green and the wind's coming off there, you're going to try and you take the wrong club, you've got a wedge in your hand instead of an eight iron or whatever it is, you're going to get the ball up in the air more, the spin is going to be exaggerated because you're left to right, it's going to go short of the thing, it's going to that ridge, on, that, that ridge on the front if you want, that little bank, it's going to go in the bunker on the right or it's going to kick to the right and go in the gorse and then you're going to come back over the, over the sand. It, it, it's a nonsense. Take an eight iron, take a nine iron and get it way left of the it's going to come in on the wind. It's going to bounce in on the left. You'd be amazed how much closer you're going to be. And if you don't get on the green from there, you've got an easier chip than have to try and get one over the sand and stop it and run because it isn't going to stop. 
So, you know, strategy on from approach play and from the whole back is a, is a, is well, a great way to, we, we, we don't want to, to, get, to take away the risk. We don't want to get hung up on numbers. We, we don't want to do that. And just playing these holes as par fives and that the par fives is a par six or a par seven and just just bonk your ball around simple just just you know play yeah, within yeah, yeah. yourself think about that 80 percent swing think about not taking the, the the wedge when an eight iron will do these are all great little lessons to take out during lockdown aren't they if people took a different approach a different approach to their approach play and got a little bit more strategic and put a swing on it which was more comfortable that i mean i know we're not going to get hung up, up, hung up on numbers but they will take out the disasters they will and the frustration because you're in a great position and then you get frustrated because you've bucketed it up then i mean the number of times in my over the years i've actually said to well i've copped a bloody good one up there haven't i mm. i wasted my opportunity there now, the first thing is, my expectation on my opportunity is that I think that everybody from 100 yards is going to have a birdie putt. That's not the case. Or a realistic birdie putt. That's not the case. The pros don't even make 10% from 100 yards, 120 yards. They only make birdie 10% of the time. What they do is they murder the par fives. That's what they do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've just got a, a question or a, a query, a, a comment from Bruce Thorne. And he says, how many people at the club don't get a shot up the seventh? It must be about 1%. I'll tell you what, it's less than that. I think scratch yeah. golfers, we've only got maybe two or three, if that, in the club. But it, it, it is funny. I, I, it'd be nice to know from the members. It'd be great if we could do a survey about which hole threatens them the most. <laughs> because, it, because your perception... And my perception could be entirely different, and that could be based on past experience, couldn't it? Well, look, Jed, Jed, every every course has got these holes. Every course. Now we might all be familiar with with Castletown, for example. Now look at Castletown. Look at the fifth at Castletown. There's a, the, the, the the club golfer gets on the fifth there at Castletown, and he knows he hits the ball ten yards left to right. He knows it's all out of bounds on the right, you know, and he still takes, and the wind's coming off the left, and he still takes his dry route, and he still expects it to have a different result than being on the road. It's a, mm. bizarre. And, and, and he, all he's got to do is take a seven iron out, knock it down to the left, take another, because he's not going to get up. If it's a drive, he's not going to get up in two anyway. But would, would you Take a seven iron out, nudge it down to the left, Take another one up, yep. and then pick his approach shot and knock it on. Yep, and, and walk off with a five. And, and for Rowney, though, th there's there's a couple of holes that aren't quite as threatening as that, okay. but can okay. can cause havoc. And I think in particular, and Go I've on, seen then. so many disasters. It's the fifteenth, where if you do right. take the left hand carriageway, as opposed to the right hand side. The outcomes can be so different, and it's the same with the fourth hole as well, where if you're a mid handicapper and you've got a shot on that hole, and it's happy to walk off with a five, taking the wrong course, the wrong direction can be so destructive. I, I, I wonder if there's any other holes that, that our viewers uh, think well, about in that way. Well, uh, yeah, I, I think you make uh, those two holes in particular. Let's have a look at those, Jeff. Look, if you have a strategy on 15 and I'm, I think you're suggesting you'd be better off down the right and knock it in from the right onto the green. That's so I feel. Yeah, right. Well, the, the strategy for me is it, look, of course, if that's where your strategy is and you want to be there, it's an easy shot in, that's great. I get that. But then the issue it then becomes wherever you are is where do I want this ball to be? Where's the best place mm. for this ball to be in order in order that I can make the, sh the, the, the next shot the easiest I could possibly be, right? And all too often, people end up short right with a horrible putt or a chip. So the key factor there is, where do I need this? So I need to be past the pin. Even if I've got a longer putt, I want to be beyond the pin. Even if it rolls past the pin, but it's better than being short right, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So the strategy is, what club do I need what do I need to do here? And I take more club and I get make sure the ball goes past the pin. When you look at the fourth, 
there's an issue there for me on the fourth that most people are getting penalised for it in the fairway because you've got all that shrubbery on the left and we need to take out all of that strip from the bunker down to the other bunker, all that foliage that shouldn't be there. It's still in, and let it grow. You can still be penalised, but because you can't see the shot land. Mm. So you, that's the problem I have with that. It's not that it, it's not this. It doesn't make it a more difficult shot or an easier shot having the foliage there. The foliage is doing nothing. It shouldn't be there. You, but what you do is you look at the pen and you say, right, where's the best place for me to be in order that I've got the the, the shot, the easiest shot, the next one? It's not going to hunt the pin. Let it go to the right and long a little bit and come back up the green. It doesn't matter. But play a club. It's not a wedge generally. Play a club that you can bump it along and let it run out because it's going to run. But it's where you leave the ball for your next one, isn't it? That's your approach play. Approach play isn't necessarily a one-shot wonder. Yeah. It's where you have to play your next one from. It, it, it's it's a good thing to just actually think to yourself, right, what am I doing here? What am I doing here? Where is my next shot going to be? It, it, it kind of simplifies it. I think sometimes you get you, you find yourself in a bit of a fog, don't you? And you, you're, right, well, you, you're right about the, the fourth. I mean, the, the day of the Triffids down there, it looks like a uh, it's a bit of a garden centre. I'm not. I, we, let's have some gorse and some more uh, natural well, habitat. Well, the, you know, that, that foliage shouldn't belong there. It's not natural to the course, is it? It shouldn't be there. Mm. But it's not only that, but, you know, you get on that tee and you hit, for a lot of club golfers, you hit a reasonable shot and you're not far away from the middle of the, the, middle of the mm. fairway and you're looking over these triffids and there's a bunker on the other side and it's, gonna, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough old shot. Why can't you see where the ball's going to land? <laughs> it's, surely mm. golf's more enjoyable when you can see the ball land. And it's just not, it's still got to be, the shot's still got to be played yeah. if there's a load of rough things. It's just about seeing the shot. Yeah. Far, far more rewarding to be able to see the shot. So I, I would say, let's get rid of that bloody yeah. thicket from there. Let's, not doing anything. let's have a poll. Should the Triffids on the fourth stay or should we replace them with something a little bit more natural? Now, we're getting close to the end of the show. So remember, okay. we've still got the competition running. And if you've got one of these at home, it might come in handy because we need to know which hole is named the ridge and we've had some good selection of answers there is a common theme approaching and in a short while we'll get john to pick a number because john can't see the comments and then we'll define who has won this magnificent prize oh we've just had someone called liz pigeon welcome liz i've not seen you on our um our roll of honor before but uh, nice to have you with us this morning and so there we go. We'll be closing that soon. But if anyone's got any comments about a hole that they fear most on the golf course, then please, you know, just just fire it in because I would be interested to know because is it or is it the second for some people? Because your round can be like destroyed in the in the, like the graveyard of broken dreams. Although I'm saying that with you won't you won't know this, John. You won't know this, John. I've found this ancient map of uh, the ground uh, before the course was laid, okay? And uh, it's from 1870. And the 14th green is actually the site of an old chapel and burial ground. So we'll put something on the, the Facebook page later on. There's a little film and, and what have you that I've made, which actually transposes the overlay onto the satellite map. It's pretty good. And you'll see how the the ground around Rowney was split up into farmers' fields. So you know, John, how you've got the wall near the um, the first hole, and the, between the first and the eighteenth. First, a wall, have we? Yeah, yeah, it's like a wall, isn't it? Like a, a farmer's wall, you know. All right. Yeah. Between the first and eighteenth. Yeah, yeah, just near the first green. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So I'll show you that this map. It's absolutely fascinating. But there we go. So we've, we're just going to have a a few more. Uh, minutes before the competition is closed and we've got some uh oh paul lowey paul guess which which hole paul lowey hates the most and it's stroke second no it, second it's stroke 17 oh. and oh. it's it's not called the ridge there's a clue there it's the eighth hole what about that our top yeah, golfer yeah. yeah and and jenny jenny castain she says the, the horror hole used to be the fifth, and now it's the seventh and the tenth. 
All right. What about that? These are These straight are, yeah, holes, aren't they? Yeah, but seventh, you know, look, seventh, seventh really um, shouldn't be that difficult, should it? You know, there's a lot of fairway. It's going to kick to the right. You can aim slightly left or centre off the tee. Don't worry about distance. You've got a few shots to get there. Knock the next one up to the right hand edge of the uh, of, of of that uh, of Beaches Brook. Let it kick to the right. And if, if any takes four shots to get on the green and uh, and two putts, then she's got a she's got uh, a bogey six. Oh. So I think simple as that. And on the seven on the seventh, it's exactly the same. On the tenth, rather, you know, from the ladies' tee, mm. simple simple shot. Plenty of fairway, keep it up the left, then knock it to the right for the third shot, and knock it on with the fourth. You know, don't worry about getting on in, in, in the, what the card says is regulation. You know, we've, we've had this conversation um, in the, uh, before in the group on a Monday night, Jed, and, and if, I, if I work with somebody uh, and sit down with them and say, look, how many shots, uh, we look at the card on, on 18 holes at, at round, and we say, how many shots is it going to take you to get to the green on every hole? And we allowed them two putts. I don't think I've had anybody, anybody that's been over about a 14 or 15 handicap. Because when they, when they dispassionately look at their ability to the the hole, they can say, for example, on the first one, well, I can get on the first in three or two. I can get on the fifth in four. I can get on the seventh in four, and they end up getting on the seventh in six. Because they haven't taken the right decision on their approach shot, and they've gone to the right and left it short sided, and then a thin one and whatever. Nobody is over a 15 handicap, and yet when they get the ball down there, they make a decision and take too little club, and they're too much club, and they go for the wrong target. They just don't think of it. I mean, what one of the things you could do that might help is you. Take a step back when you look at the shot. You said, if I was telling somebody else of the similar ability to me how they would play it, what would I tell them? And I'll bet they would say to them, look, are you seriously going to take a wedge here because you can't get there, can you? I know your game. You're not going to reach. Take more club. And they would do that, but they don't tell to somebody else, but they won't tell themselves that. It's funny, really. Those holes, uh, seven and ten, you can really yeah. just bonk it down there, can't you? Play within yourself, just bonk it down there. If you've got yeah. two shots, if you if you're off that handicap, because I've just we've got Donna has just said a, a worst is the fifth and the seventh, and I think Donna will have a handicap of forty something, maybe I'm not sure, but there is quite a bit of insurance there. Now Graham Cryer, one of our top Hi, top guys, yeah. his worst hole, he's calling it the sixteenth. That's all that. Oh about. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's visual. It's look. You can't see the ball land. It's got a ridge. You got. It's it's hard. It, it, it's hard to stop it so much. You get the wind behind. It's not an easy hole on the eye. It's not an easy hole on the eye. So the question is there is what club do I need there that's gonna and if I'm gonna miss it, where's the best place to miss it? And it's not left, is it? <laughs> so. So you know, put it put it to the right hand edge of the green. Yeah. Don't go don't go pin hunting. And put it on there. I mean, for Graham, it's only it's only something like an eight iron. Uh, Bruce as well. He he's coming. Uh, he says the sixteenth is my nemesis. I, I've stopped trying to carry a seven iron up there, which invariably oh. goes left into oblivion. We've all done that. I'm now going with a five high hybrid and trying to Great. miss it on the right. Great. Well, I would say I would say go with a five hybrid and try and and try and green it. But if I miss it, it's right. It's yeah, you, know, you, yeah. you can you you know if I'm going to miss it, it's going to be the right, not the left. But I can get on there with a five hybrid. But is that isn't that amazing? You've gone from a seven iron to a five hybrid. It's absolutely correct. Yeah, absolutely correct. Absolutely right. You know, and, and, and the other thing about this is remember that if you're taking these, this too much club and you're knocking it in high, you're not going to get it rolling out. It's not going to be moving to the hole. The idea in golf is to move it to the hole, is to travel that way, not that way. Mm. That way is spin, it's wind, it's exaggeration of spin, it's moving it towards the target. 
wise wise words john absolutely wonderful and another another great lesson there and i can't tell you how much this this spin phenomenon i mean i've played golf for donkey's years and it's only these last few weeks that i've been thinking about the square face and how much spin you put on the ball it is it's absolutely dramatic what it can do to your shot well did I, I wonder if anybody saw the any of the world match uh, the match play yesterday? Finau, I'm sure it was Finau. Yeah. He he um, uh, his his opponent on this the, the par three. The wind's coming in off the right. And they're all wanting to hit it right to left. And there's a, a there's a there's a spot to the right of the pin. There's a ridge and a rolling. And his opponent hits one. He draws it on the wind's gone and it and the, and it's into the bunker. And he goes up and he carries it and he goes out over the red line and down the bank. He gets he gets away with the chip and the putt and the other guy makes uh, makes uh, they get a half. But the commentator says that all these pros want to put more cl- as much loft in the hand because they want the spin mm-hmm. or whatever. And that and really he said that this win is exaggerating it and it's all flying. And there were dozens of, of these players going into bunker and down and out of play. All because they're putting too much spin on, and they, they want a wedge. Why aren't they taking a pretty nine iron? Is it ego? You take the spin off oh, and yeah. knock it up there. And let it... Just bizarre. It, they don't seem to have the ability to take the spin off it. It's it, unbelievable. It is. It is. Not many of us can hit the ball like Phil Mickelson. Now we're going to come to the competition. So I've got eleven entries. Okay. So we'll we'll just run through the card. We did mention that the fifth hole has a ridge, but that wasn't the right answer. The fifth hole is actually called the bell. So it is the ninth hole at Rowney that's called the ridge, and we love the ninth. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. 387 yards off the back of knockers, and it's stroke three. I'd love to see a tee on the ninth just up the hill uh, behind that little tee that we're using at the moment. Maybe knock it through the trees. That would be a great little competition feature to have. So, John, I've got um, numbers between 1 and 11. So we're going to do this fair. It's not going to be rigged. I did think about it, but we're not going to, we're not going to do that. So there we go. I've, I've got some numbers down. So John has got no idea. What I want you to do is to pick a special number for the prize between 1 and 11. Right, well, uh, uh, then the number it is because it's the whole number nine. Number nine. Oh, it's, it is. Here we go. It's Liz Pigeon. Liz Pigeon, how about that? You are the winner of, and I hope that maybe, you know, your favourite colour is blue. It is a selection of... <laughs> Pitch mark repairers. Okay, so you can have one for yourself, but hand them out to your playing partners and just remember, keep repairing those pitch marks when you're on the green. Not just your own, but try and pick two or three others. And the multiplier effect, it's like a pyramid, isn't it? We'll have the course in ship shape before you know it. So I'm just. Jed, 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 can I just come across your set? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, something I, that I, I should have said yesterday about, and in fact, the day before. One of the things that we don't pay, I'm going to get one here. One of the things we don't pay enough attention on, uh, and we talk about spin, like is the ball that we use. Oh, yeah. And if you want to get a feel for the ball, you need to get to a softer ball. You know, the, the days of monitors and that are gone, and, you know, stop getting hung up on... Pro V1s, they're just not suitable for 85, 95% of club golfers. It's all hype. Get to maybe a Callaway, the soft feel, the, the Strixon. Strixon, by the way, are a Dunlop golf ball. Dunlop makes Strixon. But you've got to remember when it's in the cold as well, in the soft ball, you probably don't get it, and you've got an extra soft ball, you don't compress the ball enough to get the distance or the, uh, or, or the right spin. So you should be looking at a ball which is relative to the spin factors are relative to your club head speed. It makes a difference on the feedback you get on impact. It makes a difference on the ball flight you get, the penetration you get, the height that you get. People don't pay enough attention to the ball that they use. Mm -hmm. So you can get online, you get ball fittings online, whatever. I can take a look at it. It's it's not that difficult, but it's it's significant. A significant factor in how high the ball goes, 
how far it goes, how much reaction you get. So get a ball that works for your club speed, your swing speed and your club head speed. And okay? uh, just just quickly on that, because we're going to finish off, because we've, yeah, we've yeah. gone on a bit. It's an epic uh, session this morning. And tomorrow we're going to be talking about longer clubs. They, sh- today, they should Jeff? be easy, apparently. Longer clubs. What, 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 what day is it today? Uh, we're on day five, so tomorrow is day six. Tomorrow. So that's Monday then? Oh, I never thought about it. Should we do it Monday or do we do, we do it on Saturday? I thought it was going to be like a 10. Uh, we, do it, we, 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 do it, we do it Monday, Jen, and I'll tell you why. So people, from, people need to go out and play, ah. I, right? We need to go out and play. We need to have some feedback, and they need to experiment, and they need to take this up. And we haven't talked technical, have we? No. Everything we've talked about is just it's going to have a massive difference to people – People's tension on the and uh, people's amount of tension in the swing, people's score, people's enjoyment. That's what this is about. We're not talking technical, where your hands are, am I in this position? What can my head do it? Nothing. So that's it. The, the, this so is this, this is the beauty of this. It's not it's not complicated, is it? This is the beauty of it. So we will come back on Monday. Now remember at Rowney there was the email that came out in the last uh, twenty four hours about you can pick a buddy. In your bubble, I'm not quite sure of the detail yet, but it's going to be a bit of a fight for who's going to play with who, maybe. So there's that. Liz Pigeon, the competition winner. Please get in touch with me via the club page if I can somehow get this magnificent prize uh, to you. That would be good. And really, I think that just about wraps it up. Thank you, John, so much for your expertise. And if you've got any comments or if you think we're going the right direction or the wrong direction, please, you know send us a message or put your comments in the box and thanks to everyone for taking part this morning so we'll come back on monday have a great weekend enjoy your golf the sun is shining at rowney down here today so check your tea time is the wind yeah is the wind blowing jen is the wind blowing is the wind blowing i think we've got about looks like about a zephyr a zephyr at the moment Oh, Fabian Goose Favre. Merci, merci beaucoup. Thank you. Right, okay, we'll we'll call it a day and we'll come back on Monday. That was great.